Okay, so I decided to do a little upgrade to the solar system on my camper. Right now, I have 1,200 watts of solar on the roof, 800 exposed when I'm driving, and there's 400 watts that are on a slide. As you can see that up here. I decided I wanted to add a ground deployed array just to give me a little bit of extra power. And I found 250 watt panels over at Santan Solar, used for only $50 a piece. I picked up a pallet of eight of these, 250 watts a piece. They're pretty massive. So how I decided to do this is to utilize the stock Ferion 10 amp charge controller plug. Bought an adapter with the MC4 connectors, made the connection like that. Now I didn't leave this completely stock. I pulled it out, rewired it with good 10 gauge PV wire. I bypassed the original system, which since I've done the solar install on this, the original system has been disconnected in many areas. So that runs down straight to this Victron Energy Smart Solar Charge Controller. It's a 150 MPPT. This would be charge controller number two. I already have a Renergy Rover 100 amp MPPT charge controller. That charge controller manages the 1200 on the roof. This manages the solar array. Now the maximum this can handle is 700 watts, but out there I have 750 watts. So I decided to experiment with putting the panels in series and also in parallel. I wanted to see which one was gonna work. Putting them in a series, the voltage was high and it reached the limit of the charge controller too quickly and shut off. I expected that that might happen. So I've tried to go ahead and put them in parallel. Although with these wired in parallel, even though it keeps the voltage and current below the specs of the charge controller, it's still possible that once the current and voltage is combined in the charge controller, it could still exceed the 50 amp charge limit. But I can get away with that here because in Southern Illinois, even during the summer, we're not running at a high enough efficiency to produce enough watts to exceed the limits. Now, if I decided to travel with this ground array, I would probably only bring 500 watts with me because it's just too much to bring all 750 and then I would never have to worry about exceeding the limits. Especially since sometimes I travel in Nevada, Utah, New Mexico, out west where the sun's more intense. So how I made this connection, like I said, I just picked up the Furion adapter with the MC4 connectors. I made a nice long PV cable. And then that travels over here to the solar panels. Because I have them in parallel, I just went ahead and used some MC4 branch connectors. And then I made an adapter with MC4 branch connectors and an Anderson plug, just to make it easy to disconnect and reconnect. And that goes into more MC4 connectors. This way I didn't have to cut up wire, in case I could use them for something else if I needed to. So the sun is dropping right now and I'm only producing about 18 amps. But when the sun pops up again here, I'll show you what it can do. Right now the inverter's on, so if I turn that off, you'll see the amps drop a bit, or jump up a little bit. My 4,000 watt Ames inverter chews about three and a half to four amps. Here's the whole setup. 800 amp hours, deep cycle hybrid gel, so only 400 usable. 1200 watts on the roof is the perfect amount to charge this battery bank in one day in full sun. So the 1900 that I got hooked up right now is just a lot of extra. Over here when I'm driving to supplement the solar, I have a 40 amp DC to DC charger. This way when I hook up to my Suburban, I'll be bringing in 40 amps for the batteries there. This is kind of turning into a miniature tour of my solar system. So these panels weigh about 42 pounds a piece. So to make a suitcase out of them like I planned probably wouldn't be very practical. 
And we've got the sun coming up, so let's take a look and see what's happening on the battery monitor. Now the air conditioning is running at full power. If I can just pull in another 20 amps, I'll start charging. That inefficient pile of junk up there. Come on, we can do it. Oh, there goes the sun. So you can see I'm bringing in 88 amps, 90 amps. It looks like the sun's gonna drop a little bit here again. So it's bringing in a lot of power. Right now I'm at 81.4%. I've been running the air conditioner down today because I was at 100% this morning and I wanted to get a little bit of that charge off of there so we could see it work. That's how I added my ground array. So hope you enjoyed. So a lot of people ask me, John, why didn't you build a 24 volt system or a 48 volt system? And the truth is, is when I built this system, I started with an 800 watt system. It wasn't that big, 12 volts was fine. It was a 12 volt camper. Didn't have to mess with any step down converters or anything like that. If I was gonna build this system again, knowing what I know now, I would have probably put in a 24 volt system. But at this point to make the change, uh, reconfiguring the batteries would be easy, but I would have to put a new inverter in, add the step down converter and you know the system is working wonderful now there's no reason for me to change it at this point so that answers that i'm sure i would get questions in the comments or somebody will watch this video and ask but that's why i did it so i hope you enjoyed the miniature tour eventually i'm gonna have a full-blown tour coming that shows all the different changes and everything i made to this camper so if you have any questions go ahead and put them in the comments or you can message me directly